Good morning, CCC. How are you guys today? Are you guys excited for Thanksgiving? Yes. We're going to start with worship. If you're new here, my name is Ashley. I'll be leading you in worship this morning. And I'm just going to enter us in with prayer. Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this, what this week represents, a heart of gratitude. And this morning, we just want to say thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you for your blood that was shed. Thank you for claiming us as your child. Thank you, Jesus.
feel like there's something on this. I keep thinking of what did it feel like for David when he just couldn't help himself but be undignified, right? It means a complete abandon because the healer's in the room. Because the Almighty God is in the room and you don't really matter. All of your things that are happening, nothing matters because the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is in the room. So can we just praise Him and worship Him like that this morning? Come on, be undignified.
can you lift your hands all over this room? You know, this is such a beautiful moment. Wow, that the presence of Jesus would walk amongst us this morning. And there's a posture that God is bringing back to the American church, and it's a posture of praise, and it's a posture of worship, and it's outwardly expressive. But I don't, I don't think we can go on to the next portion of the service until we really just take a moment and we give him what he's worthy of. So I'm gonna ask, can we sing this again, like oil upon your feet? And let's just, let's just take a moment where we just give Jesus every heart in this room and exchange extravagant and extravagant expression of praise because he will always be worthy he will always be holy he will always be righteous so come on let's just begin to sing this out every heart engaged come on i pour my love on you if praise is life The alabaster box is too beautiful. The alabaster box is too nice, too expensive, too perfect. The Lord says, your eyes are too dry. Break the box. Break the box. And let the world be filled with the perfume of my love. The Lord says, break the outward, break the expensive, break the nice, be broken before me and let my love be expressed as perfume to fill the world. Amen. Thank you. Let's just take a minute and do that. This is our last minute to pour our love on him. 
break your alabaster box before him. Whatever it is that you have right now, it's your time to give it to him fully. Would you sing that one more time for us? sing it one more time God is wanting it all one more time please that deserves to be lavished. We serve a God that deserves to be lavished. We want to stay in this place of worship as we take communion. We're going to lavish it on him with our communion. If you came in and didn't receive any elements, just slip your hand up and they'll be happy to, to bring it to you. He's a God that deserves to be lavished. If you're at home, I want you to run into the kitchen right now and get you something to take communion with us. God is doing something here. He's breaking our hearts today with his love. He's showing up in power and might. Before the service even started, the worship leaders were, were in tears. I was in here worshiping with them. God is showing up in power through our worship. Well, maybe I didn't feel like worshiping. You worship him anyway because he is worthy of it. And when you do that, all of a sudden the power of God just comes on you. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you that I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. What I want us to get out of that today is he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When God tells me to do something, I pay attention. And so this may say, well, seem rote to you, but it's up to you to make it not rote because God said, do this in remembrance of me. What are you remembering today? What are you remembering? Well, my son just had, had one of the most major surgeries I've ever known. So I'm remembering that by his stripes, we are healed. Maybe after those songs, you're remembering how the veil was rent and you can walk in there. Maybe you're just pouring your love because what did we sing to start with? Show me your presence. Walk right before me. Show me who you are. What is it that you're taking this communion and remembering the Lord about today? It's up to you to remember the things. Jesus did it. 
Now it's up to us to grab a hold of all that he did and it's for his glory. So I want you to take a minute and just reflect. It, do you, are you upset at anybody? If so, forgive them. But I also want you to reflect what are you remembering and bringing before the throne room of God today? are so thankful that we get to serve a God who is living alive, shows up in our services, pours his love out on us as we pour our love on him. Father, today I'm remembering that by his stripes we are healed. What are you remembering? In Jesus' name, go ahead and take your element. Thank you for the blood. Everything happens because of the blood. I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus. It's his blood. It's his blood. God, I thank you for the blood. We did not deserve it, but you loved us so much that you gave it anyway freely. We are so thankful for that today in Jesus' name. Go ahead and take your cup. church that will take the time for God. You know, today was a day where we didn't have a lot of words. You know why? Because this was what was happening up here. I just want to explain that at one point I had to take care of my grandkids because I have them today, but I came back, the microphone was off. I said, it's not time for, for anybody to say anything. We don't sometimes want to mess with what God is saying. And I, I just want to commend Randy for that beautiful word that he brought forth at, at just the right time. If you've never been to Coweta Community Church, I want to welcome you today. My name is Sharon Mullins. I'm so glad you're here. If you're watching online, you need to get here because things are happening. I hope you felt it at home. It's just a marvelous time to be serving God. As a matter of fact, we have ladies that come in and they're praying over every church, every seat in this church. And today I had three of my grandkids and we all went through every seat. Every one of my grandkids, those three touched those seats and released the name of Jesus. So it doesn't just happen just because we showed up. It happened because we're making a way. We're having pre-service prayer. We're releasing the power of God. The worship team is waiting on God. They're praying. They're seeking his face. Did we do it perfect? We only have one that's perfect. His name is Jesus. And so we did it to the best of our ability with the excellence we know how to. And may, may God receive all the glory. That's all we want is for him to get the glory. I just want to make a few announcements. It's killing me that I have to do this because the power of God is so strong. But I just want the ladies, pay attention. This is so important. Our women's prophetic Christmas party is coming up. And today, it's going to be Friday, December the 2nd. I said Friday, our first Friday, not Saturday. But today's your last day to get tickets. Did you guys know that? You can get them in the back afterwards or you can go online. And you might say, well... I'm, I'm new to CCC. What in the world are you talking about? Come see Cipra. Come see Catherine. Come see myself. Come see Deneen. Anybody on her team. And we will explain it. We'll sit down with you. It's going to be the greatest experience of your life. And you're going to be so blessed. So raise your hand, Cipra, Catherine, Deneen, myself. Anybody on Deneen's team, if you're in here, raise your hand. Talk to us about anything you, any questions you have. 
Our church offices are going to be closed the week of Thanksgiving, but the Mountain Movers prayer meeting will be meeting on Tuesday. And Sunday, December 11th, this is important, is our Sunday morning candlelight service. We normally have it on Christmas Eve. We're having it on a Sunday morning. We're having candles. They're even buying electric candles for the kids. Come on, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so what's the date now? December 11th. Okay. Praise God. So if you're here today um, and this is your first time, I'm talking to those that attend. I'm talking to those that are members. We are a church that believes in offerings and tithes. We do it because that's how we put the lights on. That's how the, all of this thing that you see here happens. There's easy. Go online. There's a donation box right there in the back. When you came through the door, you can text it in or mail it in. And, and you know what? Thank you, Jesus, because we have some faithful people in here who tithe. But not only that, they tithe and give offerings. Offerings. I'm inviting my husband to be making his way up here since I'm trying to find him and I'm thinking he's outside or something talking to somebody i don't have the gift of gab like he he does oh yes but, yes you do but i just want to give god glory <laughs> if, if i did he would have gotten up back there and started his way this way i just want to thank you guys for for loving on jesus today it was just beautiful it was just marvelous and i'm just so blessed hello hello she said, she said she doesn't have the gift of gab. Everybody repeat after me. Blind spot. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Catherine's dying to get up here and preach on worship. But she will, praise God, because she just told me during the message, during the worship that, oh, I've got a message. And she does. She has a tremendous message. Uh, but praise God, I feel like we need to go ahead and do what God wants me to do this morning. Amen? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't too good. <laughs> Catherine, would you like to preach? <laughs> uh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm just going to ask the Lord to help us today. Father, help us with your word. Come, Holy Spirit. We know you're already here. We've prayed you in. We've welcomed you in. We just pray now that you would continue to manifest your presence in our midst. The greatest thing that can happen is we encounter you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Uh, we have been out of town. I'm going to give you a little update real quick. We are last, really Thursday through Sunday, we were ministering up at Livingstone's Fellowship. It's a church we're associated with for many, many years. Uh, their kids come to our camps and... Uh, their ministers have been down here in many different expressions. I want to tell you, the church up there is doing great. They're really doing well. They're growing. They're healthy. Uh, they've just got a, just, it's, just, it's just a great opportunity. And uh, we heard that God is still alive in this place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God's up to something. We just don't want to make sure we, or we want to make sure we don't get in his way. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a couple of pictures, and, and before I do that, though, uh, you know, everything that we encounter, if we will allow the Holy Spirit to reveal it to us, can flow in a prophetic river. Did you hear me? A thread. You know, sometimes we, one meeting may not seem to be connected to another meeting. One event may not seem to be connected to another event, but... Uh, and. and I just try to listen and see prophetically. What are you showing us, Lord? So, so I'm going to talk about a couple of things here real quick, but I want to give you just a forewarning that this message is not about, um, it's not about abortion and it's not about gender confusion, okay? But, but I want to just show you a couple of slides and just talk to you real quick about why it is so important. Oh, God, help us. Why it is so important for us to not be discouraged in light of opposition. And here, if I had to have a title for the message today, it's opportunity and opposition, okay? Opportunity and opposition. So um, we were up in North Carolina, and we had the blessing to uh, attend the 40th week 
weekend where they gather at the, the Southeast's largest abortion clinic uh, every weekend for 40 weekends in a row. Each weekend is taken by a church. Livingstone takes two, church, two of the weekends, I think. And then all of the churches gather on this weekend. I'll give you a real quick uh, inspiring story. This abortion clinic... And the call center, the the people who own it are the Schneiders, and they own three abortion clinics, one in Charlotte, one in Atlanta, and one I forget where else. But anyway, this is the largest one in the Southeast. Uh, While we were there, 26 women were registered to abort their children on that Saturday morning. But the good news, since they started this Love Life Charlotte in 2016, 38 of those abortion clinic workers have repented and come out of that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it's, it's my understanding that uh, literally thousands of women have refused to go through with their abortion because of this ministry. And we heard testimonies that morning of the women. We saw some twins there. A lady gave a testimony. It was all great. Praise God. But they're located in an office park. And in order to get down to the office park, in the past, you had to, well, you still have to park all along the lanes of this big circle that goes around, and you have access to the, uh, to the clinic. Well, it was very difficult for a number of years for people to get parked and walk way down there and do their prayer walk. It's a silent prayer walk. There are other ministries going on, but it's a silent prayer walk around the, around the clinic. It's a big loop that you take in silent prayer. Well, the, uh, not only the city of Charlotte, the city government of Charlotte did everything they could to stop these silent marches. And, uh, and then the people who own the property, the abortion clinic, and the call center there, they did everything they could to stop. But what they didn't think, what they didn't consider is our God is a mighty God. Amen? Our God is a mighty God. So there just happened to be a big empty lot right next to the abortion clinic. All righty? It's really nice. Isn't it, Kristen? It's a big empty lot right next door. So somebody who loves God and who loves biblical values and hates the slaughter of innocent children bought that lot. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So, so right next door, every Saturday for 40 Saturdays, right next door, the lot's bigger than the lot that the abortionist clinic is on. Praise God. So every weekend they set up their stage. They have prayer, they have worship, they have testimonies, and then they have the prayer walk for 40 weekends. So, but while we were doing that, there was something going on here, right? There was a love life going on here. Now, this is what the Lord showed me prophetically. And by the way, this message is not about these things. I'll get get to some good stuff here in a minute. This is good stuff, but I'll get some better (laughs) stuff. Praise God. This event going on here was celebrating the promise and the actual manifestation that Jesus can change lives and take people who are confused about their sexuality, addicted to whatever, and they can get totally rescued. Amen? And, the, and you heard testimonies, if you were here, all day long of this, prote- this beautiful ministry. So what we have here, if you look in the first five chapters of Genesis is you have, I believe, the two biggest issues facing our culture today. You have the slaughter of innocent lives, right? Cain and Abel. It's the first sin in the Bible after the Garden of Eden. It's where Cain was cursed because he took an innocent life, right? And then you have the created them male and female. He created them. So you have these two issues that have converged upon Here we are today. Here we are today. And what we see is tremendous opposition to the truth. Now, on the election day, I noticed a little poll that they announced in the middle of the day before any of the polls were closed. And this was the result of the poll. It said 62% of Americans believe there should be a national or a federal law protecting abortion. Did you hear what I said? So 62% of Americans said that there should be federal protection of abortion. Now, I received this message in the midst of a a, a, a corporate gathering. 
And as I've gotten older, I like to drop little nuggets into these young leaders. If you want a message for a corporate people, pray corporately. Did you hear me? If you want a message for a corporate people, get corporate. Now, you just read your Bible, you'll see what I'm talking about. Did you hear me? Pentecost came at the result of a corporate prayer meeting, right? Acts chapter 4, a corporate gathering, right? Acts chapter 10, a corporate gathering. Council of Jerusalem, a corporate gathering. God will give us all kinds of revelation in our private prayer closet, and he should, he will, praise God. But leaders, if you want a corporate word, get corporate. Don't shy away from going to prayer meetings. Get involved in prayer, public prayer meetings, gatherings, and wait on the Lord. And so I get a lot of my words right here on Wednesday night in a corporate prayer meeting or in mountain movers or in the service while the service is going on. Free nugget. Praise God. Let's put this scripture up. Opportunity and opposition. Say it. Opportunity and opposition. 1 Corinthians 6, teen and 8. But I will stay... It's 16, praise God. (laughs) But I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost. And I read that. I said, why? Why? Why is he going to stay until Pentecost? You know why? Because there's a power, there's a promise of power in Pentecost. See, Paul knew what happens at Pentecost. There's a power promise at Pentecost. And then he says in the same verse, verse 9, because a great door of effective work has been opened to me. Say opportunity. 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 But see, in the Bible, opportunity almost always comes with a opposition. You see? Opposition. Because a great door of opportunity has been open, or effective work has been open to me, and there are what? Many who oppose me. You see, every opportunity God gives us, we have an opportunity to see the kingdom of God advanced. Right now, we have Russell Long and and Pastor Joseph and some others in Columbia, Santa Marta, Columbia right now. I promise you, I promise you, whatever opportunity they have, and they've already had a lot of good opportunities. They said there's healing signs, wonders, miracles, salvations down there, but I guarantee you there's been some opposition. Sometimes manifested physically, sometimes totally in the spiritual realm. There are consequences to great opportunities. We have a great opportunity before us. Take our eyes off the opposition and look at the opportunity. See, Paul looked at Jerusalem. He said, I'm going to Jerusalem. They already warned him prophetically that a great harm awaits him in Jerusalem. But he said, I'll go there and die. Why? Because he knew there was an opportunity to advance the kingdom in Jerusalem. You see what I'm saying? Don't shy away from opposition. He said, I'm going to Jerusalem. There's a great door of opportunity awaiting for me. But I'm not going to be deferred because there's many who oppose me. Can I tell you right now? There are many who oppose the truth of the kingdom, the truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the truth of the Word of God, the truth of the Holy Spirit. Many, you've heard me say this, the situation is excellent. Praise God. Now, I want to talk to you real quick. Y'all following me? I want to talk to you real quick about Pentecost. A few more nuggets. The church is in a season of Pentecost. Say season. Season. The season. It is a season of first fruits. It is a season of harvest, right? It is 50 days after, well, 49 plus 1 after the second day of Passover. It's a season. We like to recognize that on the calendar. How many would say amen? Amen. But it's not a day. It is a state of being. Did you hear me? It's not a day. It's a state of being. We are in the season of Pentecost. Don't deny Pentecost. Pentecost is the promise of the power of Jesus Christ. It's the first fruits of a kingdom that will never end. Did you hear me? 
It's the first fruits of a kingdom that will never end. Pentecost is in us. It's not back there at some date. You see, the Jews had to celebrate dates. They had to celebrate weeks. They had to celebrate occasions. We celebrate a state of being. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in us. The Holy Ghost is in us. It's not a time. It's a season. Christ is in us. Pentecost is in us. We are in the feast of harvest. Jesus says the harvest is plentiful. Matthew 9 and Luke chapter 10. The the harvest is plentiful. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. Why? Because it's Pentecost. The season of Pentecost. We are in the feast of harvest. My gosh. Shiggy. Oh, excuse me. Hey, that's no worse than good goggly moogly or whatever my son said when they operated on him the other day. He was out. He was under the influence of drugs. He said, what did he say? Good googly moogly? Uh-huh. Praise God. Good googly moogly. He says in Corinthians, first chapter for, uh, 15 of Corinthians, that Jesus was what? The first fruits. He is Pentecost. Now, I have a question for you. We're going to stop here, look at something, and go back. What is the most dangerous state we could find ourselves in? Say complacency. I saw that dark cloud on a Wednesday night. And the Lord said complacency. Now, you might think of complacency as just being satisfied. It is, in a sense. It is. But it's being satisfied without critical examination of your good state or your bad state. It's being resigned to where we are without a critical examination, without a critical look. Amen? Amen? Jesus rebuked the church in Laodicea because they were complacent. They were not critically looking at where they were. Amen? So, we need to always be, whether it be a negative, we have everything we need, we think, or a positive, we think we need a lot more than we have. We always have to be looking at it in light of the Word of God, in light of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen? God knows that we need The presence, here it is, God knows that we need the presence of opposition in the midst of opportunity. Say need. Need. We need it. We don't need victory in everything now. We have victory. Amen? But we are seeing victory being manifest. We are like him in spirit, but not in reality. Yep. It's we are saved, but we are being saved. Good. It is the kingdom not yet, yep. but already. Yep. It is a mystery. Yep. Amen. Yep. But here's the thing. God knows we need the presence of opposition. So when we look ahead, we celebrate our victories, but we don't waste tears over our opposition. It's a waste of time because God's got us because it says nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Nothing. Elections. Abortionists. What? LBGTQHWYZ. It will never, they'll never separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Paul had a great opportunity. Say opportunity. He had, you know what it says? He writes in Ephesians that God is able to grant us super abundantly more than we ask or imagine. Think about that. Super abundantly more. Well, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, well, how did that manifest in his life? 
I think one way it manifested in his life is, listen to this. God took Paul to the third heaven. He showed him indescribable scenes. So marvelous, he was not permitted to even discuss them. Think about it. Great revelation. God gave him that revelation. I'm going to read it to you real quick. Second. Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. We keep to keep me from becoming conceited because of those surpassingly great revelations. Those surpassingly great revelations, if you look at that, more than what we could ask or imagine. You see. There was given me a thorn in my flesh. Now, don't get bogged down. What is that thorn? I have my opinions, you have your opinions. One of the opinions is that thorn. One of the prominent opinions is that thorn is just the resistance to the gospel message. Paul just got tired and said, Lord, can't we just go somewhere where everybody loves me? (laughs) Quit teasing me with these little eruptions of love. Let me be saturated in love. I'm just thinking what he would probably be thinking. A messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take, away, take it away from him. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power will rest upon me. He said, listen, <laughs> I'm not going to worry about opposition. I'm going to boast in my opposition. You know Why? Every single moment of opposition that runs across us is an opportunity for God to be glorified. Amen. Amen. And all it means essentially that God be glorified is that the truth penetrate every error. Every error is penetrated by the truth. Give glory to God. Tell the truth. The truth is God's word. It penetrates all the lies of the enemy. So every moment of opposition is a stage being set for the glory of God to break through. So get ready. Get ready. The enemy always overplays his hand. Always overplays his hand. Yeah. So many times the enemy celebrates this, that, or the other, and it's just a massive stage being set up for the glory of God to be revealed. Come on now. Come on now. So... In light of opposition, how do we respond in the midst of our opportunity to advance the gospel, to be salt and light in a very dark and lost world, right? The first thing, y'all with me? Oh, I'm so much on time. You know, I'm getting better at it. Come on. Nobody ever tells me that. They only notice when you go over. (laughs) Denise! We have a rule in our church. (laughs) No comments from the peanut gallery. (laughs) Praise God. Hallelujah. (laughs) I appreciate that. Very timely, Denise. Thank you. Thank you very much. You want to preach? No. I know you do, though. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so how do, we, how do we respond, okay? The first thing all of us need to remember going forward is Romans 15 and 4. For everything that was written in the past was what? Written to teach us so that through endurance and encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. Right? Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go there too much. But when Moses was called by God to go back to Egypt, it was a great opportunity. A 400-year-plus opportunity to see people in bondage, taken out of bondage into freedom. To begin to worship the Lord in wilderness. And there were other sub-benefits to it. Number One of them was to take... Take all the plunder, the gold and the silver from the Egyptians. A lot of good stuff there. But Moses could only look at the opposition. Did you hear what I said? 
All Moses could do was remember how he was run out of town. That's all he could think about, you see. We have opportunities before us. Are we going to look at our past failures, our past disappointments, or are we going to look with faith into the future? Did you hear me? Moses was having one of those days, right? Exodus chapter 4 and verse 2, telling the Lord all the things he couldn't do. And the Lord said, what is that in your hand? Church, going forward, parents, singles, grandparents, what is that in your hand? What is this in my ear? What is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? Moses had a staff. We have 100 times more. Did you hear me? What do we have? What do we have? What do you have? What do you have? I know what you're thinking. I'd like one too. Matter of fact, I'd like three. I haven't had one in years. What do you have? Everybody just looking at me. You know what I'm talking about. Well, it'll remain a mystery for a while to some of you. Moses had a staff. We have much more. What do we have? We have what Paul had when he was going to Jerusalem. We have Pentecost. The whole the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. To noon in Georgia, Georgia, and beyond. Praise God. We have the Holy Spirit. What do you have in your hand? We have the Holy Spirit in our hand. Praise God. We have the Word of God. He didn't have it. Well, he had it a little bit. He had a lot, lot later on. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what else we have. A little old bitty church in Noonan, Georgia. We have the community of believers. We have a household of faith. We have a church of the living God. We are a family of power because that's what the Bible says. You say, well, Pastor Pete, it's not that much power. Yes, it does. Ephesians 3 and 10. His tent was now, his tent was now that what? Through the church? The manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms. We want to beat what's going on. We want to deal with the opposition. We better go up there. We go up there in prayer. We take captive every thought that opposes Jesus Christ and bring it into obedience. Up there, there's a highly organized, massive army of devils arrayed against the church. But we have the church. It was his intent, Jesus, that this church would demonstrate. Think about it. Demonstrate. The power of God to principalities and powers. And we have, would you stand with me? We have, oh, I love it. What's in our hands? The Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the church, the promise of victory. Say promise of victory. Let us not become weary in doing good. Can I paraphrase that? Let us not become weary when opposition shows up. For in due season, due time, amen, we will reap a what? Harvest. What time is it? It's harvest time. We're in Pentecost. It's not a date on the calendar. It's a state of being. Holy Ghost. Amen. David, give us some traveling music. (laughs) Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, now listen, if you need prayer for anything under the sun, all of the leaders, please come up. And anybody else anointed to pray, you don't have to be a leader. If you're anointed to pray for somebody, if God's used you before to pray for somebody, just come on up. Any, any leaders at all, come on up. Any people that are anointed to pray, 
If you have any need whatsoever, come on, Bonnie, praise God. You can pray for people all day long. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Nancy, let's go, hubba hubba. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on up here, guys. Now listen, you may have a need. It may be a, it may be a spiritual need. Just, Lord, just give me more Pentecost. <laughs> Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It may, may be a, a material need, relationship, finances. You need, need a door open and a job or a pro, promotion. You may need just whatever you need. Just, you just may need to feel better. Don't leave here today without getting prayer. Amen. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, that you have anointed us with the Holy Spirit, that we are living in Pentecost, and you, Lord, have loved us enough to allow us to be opposed so that we will see the glory of God in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. If you don't have a need, you're dismissed, but please come up here and let these people pray for you.